one of the most important upgrades of the Mini 3 Pro compared to the Mini 2 is the ability to track moving objects and to follow people, cars, cycles, boats, and so on. This ability to track, at times referred to as follow me, is one of the most popular functionalities in a drone, and therefore a significant selling point for the Mini 3, being the first DJI model under 250 grams to offer it. The three tools for tracking are grouped under the name of Focus Track, Spotlight, Active Track, and to a minor extent point of interest. In this video, I will analyze Active Track. It is the mode to use for uh, autonomous tracking. In other words, following a moving subject without the need of an operator controlling the drone. It is therefore ideal for follow me situation when we are walking, cycling, or driving, I cannot use the remote controller. When tracking a subject using the remote controller, in most cases I prefer to use the mode Spotlight. But in certain situations, Active Trap can still be a good choice. I will analyze the difference between the two modes later on in this video. To enter Photos Track, we simply draw a box around the target. A small window will appear with the three modes available. In the menu control, we can select the option Subject Scanning. In this case, the software recognizes specific targets like people, cars, bicycles, boats and vehicles, and puts a plus sign around them. To enter the three focus track modes, we can simply tap on the plus sign. This method is particularly suitable with targets that are already in motion. Subject scanning is available at 4K with frame rates up to 30 frames per second. And in fact, the three focus track modes do not work at frame rates higher than 30 frames per second. This is a bit of a disappointment, as it means that we cannot apply some true slow motion while tracking, which would often be useful. Another major upgrade of the Mini 3 compared to the Mini 2 is the presence of obstacle sensors. The tracking functionalities are strongly linked to the ability to detect and avoid obstacles. There are a pair of sensors at the front, towards the back, and at the bottom. It is not an omnidirectional system like in the Mavic 3, as there are no sensors at the sides and at the top. The front and back sensors have a wide-angle view and partially protect the sides and the top. But obstacles placed near 90 degrees to the sides or straight above will not be detected. For this reason, I would recommend using the Mini 3 for close range follow me only in wide open areas without any obstacles. I would not use it under canopy of trees or in a forest. When tracking action, I would remain above any obstacle. The only model of the current DJI line really suitable for close range tracking is the Mavic 3, thanks to the omnidirectional sensors. Let's start with some autonomous tracking in situations where we cannot use the remote controller and the drone is operating entirely by itself. These situations are often referred to as follow me and are the one where Atti Track really shines. The interface for tracking is not as sophisticated as the one of the Mavic 3, where we can set 8 different positions compared to the target. With the Mini 3 we have a choice between Trace and Parallel. Let's start with Trace. With this option we can set a specific height and distance from the target and the aircraft will follow at a constant distance from behind or in front. It is also possible to have the drone just above the target with the camera pointing down for bird's eye tracking. In parallel mode, the aircraft tracks the target from a side at an angle slightly bigger than 90 degrees to help the action of the sensors. Again, it follows the movement of the target, maintaining a constant distance. You can see that the drone keeps track of the target very well and manages to anticipate its position when it is covered by trees. It is also useful to track one or more persons at a close distance, maybe someone telling a story or singing, or two or more persons discussing while walking. 
I would select a wide open location without any obstacles, maybe a beach or a scene with an interesting background. Wooded areas are to be avoided for obvious security issues. And anyway, I never understood the point of having a drone following someone walking in a forest, as the drone will be constantly changing direction to avoid obstacles, with no interest at all. Assuming that we don't want to carry the remote controller for more interesting results, we can adjust the distance from the subject and the height before starting. Tracking from behind works very well, even when the target changes direction. But I don't find following someone from behind particularly interesting. We can move the drone in front of the target for a much more interesting scene. One thing I notice immediately is that with the Mini 3 it is possible to set a much lower height compared to previous models, about a meter or three feet. This is very useful for a different view of the subject and to reveal an interesting background. In parallel mode, the drone will maintain the height and the distance, but it will follow from the side. Active track can also be used with a camera in vertical orientation. Tracking in portrait mode works just as well as in the traditional landscape format. Vertical video is a major feature of the Mini 3 and the ability to track in this format is an important selling point for users active on digital social media platforms. When tracking without the use of the remote controller, on some occasion we can do it with spotlight. In this mode the drone will hover, keeping the subject in the frame by panning laterally, behaving like a… well, like a spotlight. Another way to use Spotlight without a controller is when following someone moving in a confined space, like a boxer in a ring, a comedian, or a rock star on stage. While tracking, we can apply a smooth zoom using the right wheel of the remote controller. This is especially useful to get closer to the target because, as we saw earlier, in most cases we have to keep the drone at some distance to stay away from obstacles. Obviously it is a digital zoom, therefore with a loss of resolution, so it is only useful when encoding at 1080p, maybe for posting on social media. When we can use the remote controller, in most cases for tracking I tend to use the mode Spotlight. You can click on this link to watch my video about it. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.